Hi everyone, Talia from Zart Art, and today we're going to be making 2D symmetrical bugs. So here we have an example of what we'll be creating. So this lesson is all about symmetry, and you can see there's symmetry in the shape of the bugs, as well as the colours that we'll be using, and we have really simple materials that we'll be using. So all we need is some coloured paper. So we've got an A5 piece of paper here, and we've got a piece of paper that's slightly larger than A4, but as long as you have two different sizes, then you'll be fine. We've also got a glue stick, a grey lead pencil, scissors, and a eraser. So to begin, what we're going to do is use our smaller piece of paper and draw some of the bug shapes just on the edges. So getting my example, as you can see here, we're just going to be drawing half of the bug. So we don't want to draw the full thing, just half of the bug on each side. And as you're drawing, you might decide to do a different bug on each side of the paper, or you can do the same one if you really want to have that sense of symmetry in your work. So depending on what year level you're working with, you might want to choose really simple shapes because later on we'll be cutting these out and if your shapes are very complicated and you have students that are just starting to work with scissors, they're going to have a lot of trouble trying to get around those fine lines. So have a think about what level your students are and then cater those drawings towards that level. Okay, so now the next step, once you've got your bugs drawn onto your piece of paper, we're just going to cut around those shapes. So make sure when you're cutting that you do it in one cut because we don't want to snip into a shape and ruin either the positive or negative space. We need to keep both of those intact. So like I was saying before, ensure that you're catering this towards the level that you're working at. If your kids are just starting to use scissors, make sure that it's simple. If your kids are more advanced, say a more senior primary level, then you can go really complicated and test those cutting skills. Once you've got your little pieces cut out, we're just going to place it on our coloured background. I'm just going to erase any extra pencil marks that have been left on our first sheet. So just clean that up a little bit, make sure you don't rip your paper either, so be a little bit careful. And now with our cut out pieces, we're just going to flip them and then line them up with their other cut out area so you'll know which side to flip because you'll have pencil marks on one side. So flip it over to the clean side and just match those up. Okay so once you've got them lined up and what you might notice is some of your pieces might overlap 
onto the page if your other piece of paper isn't big enough to fit it, but I kind of like that it adds a really nice composition to the work, so I don't mind having it coming off the side. If you do mind that, then you might want to work with a larger piece of paper as your base, but I'm quite happy with how that looks. But if you do want to add another element, you can cut out an extra piece inside your bug. So you can see I've just drawn some little shapes inside these bugs. So what I'm going to do is cut these out and then I'm going to flip them back over onto our base sheet and then you'll get a little bit more of a colour combination happening. So I'll cut this out and then lay it back down and you'll see what I mean. So once you've placed your pieces, just make sure that they're where you want them. And the final step is just to paste these down. So I've just got a normal glue stick and I'm going to start by pasting this middle section down first and then just lining up my other pieces. Now that we've finished pasting down our pieces, you can see there's a nice flow between the colours that we've got here as we've just added another piece into our composition by cutting out another little section of our bugs and then sticking it onto the other side for that symmetry as well as that colour flow. And just looking at these two together, as you can see, we've used complementary colours in these two samples. So when you are choosing your colours, you might want to either choose warm or cool or just have colours that contrast to really get that nice effect. But this is a really great activity that you can do for a variety of year levels. If you are going for the younger students, you might want to do really simple shapes. The older students choose more intricate shapes and you can also use Stanley knives if you are working with those older kids. But it's a really nice versatile project to teach students about symmetry. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.